a warm welcome to all of you. Let me make sure I'm on. There we go. A warm welcome to all of you on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, I'm Reverend Beth Hayward. My pronouns are she, her, and I welcome you to this space. This is the Sunday of love. And I mean, frankly, every Sunday we gather here could be called the Sunday of love because that's what we're trying to tap into, what we're trying to learn to do better amongst one another. And so uh, whatever space you're in, whoever you are, whatever story you come with, you're welcome in this place. We gather on the traditional uh, lands of the Mi'kmaq people, and we keep the call to reconciliation at the heart of all that we do. And so I thought as a, as a good way to kind of show up, there's going to be so much excitement, especially if you've got children in your lives, over the next 24 hours or so. Let's show up and, um, and take a little breath and pause for a moment and have a prayer as we center in worship. Join your hearts with me, will you, as I pray? O oh, Holy One, awaken us. Awaken us to your light. Open our eyes to your presence. Awaken us, O oh Source, to your love. Our hearts to your indwelling. Awaken us, O oh Christ, to your life. Open our minds to your presence. And awaken us, O oh Spirit, to your calling. May our lives be open to your guidance. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen. Um, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able. We're going to sing a beautiful Christmas carol together and and sing it like no one's listening. Because they're not, really.
weeks we have lit candles for hope, peace, and joy. Today we lay a candle for love. We light these candles acknowledging that there are times when love is lost, love is abused, love is rejected, when love hurts. And we light these candles to declare the power of love that endures, the power of love offered without condition, the power of love to transform. May the light of holy love shine in each one that we might be light and love in this world. way up for the announcements and if there's children present like Daisy can you come up here any other kids who are here you're welcome to come join me we're just doing a little story time it's kind of short but I need your help with something want to come too shy all right so you're gonna have your work cut out for you Daisy but first of all we're gonna talk about Christmas what, the gift of Christmas <laughs> what's the word of the day what's the word of the day you just let the candle remember love. yes love you got it you knew it um, so my question is like, how do do you know that you're loved? Yeah. Anyone? Everyone? Do, yes? No? I hope we all know we're loved. Can you? You know my microphone's not working. The other one. So, are you willing to like tell us one example of how you know you're loved? Uh, and you you can go and use the microphone because you're a pro at it now. I only put kids on the spot when you know I know they love the microphone. So it's an example of how you know your love. When mom makes me lunch every day. Oh my goodness. Now that, oh, you cry. I'm gonna cry at that one. Hey, perfect. That is so perfect. Um, and you know what was so perfect about that? Because love is shown in like really practical, everyday ways. Um, so that's what we're celebrating today, love. And who's coming tonight that's not Santa Claus? Like who are we celebrating tonight? This is not Santa Claus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping the, if you can find the other characters for the crash that are hidden behind the candles, if you can get Mary and Joseph and maybe the donkey in there while I talk a little more, that'd be great. So, because Jesus is the incarnation of love. So what I really like to remember on this night and this day is god chose to come in a baby in that moment when when we realize that god fully loves humanity and the thing about babies is who can help but love them they are love they fill you with love they babies are like like they smell so good except when the diapers need changing but they smell so good and they're so fresh and they're so wonderful so that's why i think god said you know what Coming in a baby, that would be a really good way for people to understand all about love. All right, we've got them set up. Perfect. So, yeah, so when you come tonight, Mary and Joseph will be ready for us and the baby sees us. And um, be ready because I'll have more questions and put you on the spot again. All right. I'm going to call on Carol now um, to do the announcements.
Well, welcome to Fort Massey, everyone. I'm Carol Dobson, and part of the Christian tradition is to extend the sign of peace whenever we gather. So please join me in putting your hands in the prayer position as we meet one another. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. We'll be gathering back here this evening at 7 for the candlelight Christmas Eve service. We'll sing all the favorite candle carols, celebrate the birth of Christ, and end the, singing, the evening singing Silent Night by Candlelight. We look forward to seeing you then. So happy birthday to Maddie Spicer, celebrating on the 29th, and to others celebrating birthdays and special anniversaries this week. Please note that the church office will be closed until January 3rd. Reverend Beth's phone number is in the order of service today should any pastoral emergencies arise at this time. And we would like to extend our sympathies to Carol Sinclair and the rest of her family on the death of her sister-in-law, Evelyn Jean Sinclair. Evelyn grew up at Fort Massey and died this week in South Carolina. You're all welcome to gather for coffee and conversation immediately following the service in the hall, which is located through the doors behind me. Now I invite you to join in singing together, See Amid the Winter's Snow.
I want it to keep going too. But, um, that's one of my favorites, and we don't usually get to sing it on Christmas Eve because it's not in the top five. Um, and just, it, you may have noticed the words if you sung that hymn as a child, those are a little different. Uh, and those were written by Linnea Good, who's a, a singer, songwriter, musician in the United Church. So grateful for her offering in those beautiful words. This is the moment of offering where pre-pandemic we would have handed the plates around uh, for people to give their gifts. There are offering plates at the entrance when you came in and we're grateful uh, for all of your generosity and particularly if you're giving uh, through pre-authorized remittance or, or envelopes. Uh, helps, helps us to keep doing the work we're doing uh, because of those offerings. Just a, a special reminder that this is um, our Say It With Stars campaign is coming to a close. So all through Advent, we've invited people to make a donation in honor of someone, in memory of someone, in celebration of something, a special Christmas offering. And so you'll see the stars um, there in the arches, and they're starting to grow. Some of them are silver and some are gold. And uh, uh, deep gratitude, not just for those offerings, but for the, the people and the places and the times that they represent. They're a symbol that our lives are enriched by one another. And so as an offering this day, a word of gratitude um, for our gifts, for the gift of your presence, and a prayer that we might continue to live into being a generous people, trusting that there is an abundance for us to share of our time and talent in this world. One of the rituals we do around offering is we, we sing a prayer um, in appreciation. And so I'll invite you to stay seated while we sing our offering song this day. Good morning. <clears throat> the Gospel lesson today comes from the prologue of John's Gospel. Unlike Matthew and Luke, John begins his story not with Jesus' birth, but with a much greater cosmic context. The opening verses are reminiscent of the opening words of Genesis. This text suggests that the Word, the transformative power of God, has been present and at work in the world from the beginning. Here, the story of Jesus is set within the context of a much larger story. The reading culminates with the idea that the word that has always been God's transformative presence in the world becomes the incarnate in Jesus. A reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There, were, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He, became, he came to witness and to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world came in be, into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave, he gave power to the children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived amongst us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Offered his wisdom for the journey. May we walk in his light. As people are getting into position for this one, I do want to say that we're so excited to welcome Jade and Lewis back from Italy. They're singing with us today. Um, also, Maggie, uh, Lisa's daughter, has joined us. I was her counselor in junior choir camp maybe seven years ago. Um, and also, Susan is always so gracious about joining in on violin. So we have Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates.
Well, that was beautiful. <laughs> Thanks for gifting us with that. It, um, I mean, it brings back memories for me of, of childhood and, and all. I, I've celebrated Christmas in the church my whole life and how music is such a rich part of that. And honestly, I've been a little bit nostalgic lately. And it might be because I'm, you know, back in the best place on earth for Christmas again. And it's been so long that I, all those childhood memories are, are coming back. Um, things like we would have Christmas dinner as a, a wider family and there'd always be extra people at the table and, and how great it felt that, that the table was full and there was so much and childhood memories like, like the year I played the church mouse at church. You might not know that there's a mouse in the Christmas story, but there was that year. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if you have warm memories of Christmas. Some of us do. Maybe if you're of a certain age, and I think I was just on the, the end of the cusp of that age, you'll remember pulling uh, an orange from the toe of your stocking. Is that right? They don't do that anymore. Santa, like, I don't know. It's all toys and candy now. But you might remember that smell of Christmas. Or maybe you put a nativity scene out every year. Maybe it was the card table, you know, where everyone gets in on the action, even the cat um, once a year, and everyone becomes a, a puzzle connoisseur. <laughs> so I've been thinking of those warm Christmas memories, and I'm, I'm really well aware that for many people, Christmas does not just hold warm memories. Some it might not hold any, and certainly for most of us, it's probably a mix, right? You come home for Christmas, if you will, and home's different, or you're different, and they don't seem to get it, and they're still treating you like your 12-year-old self, or they're still calling you by your dead name, or, or they're the same addictions, or bad behavior that was there in childhood seems to just have only gotten worse. So I'm well aware that Christmas is, um, is a real mix for us. But I want to talk about that Christmas spirit, that feeling of Christmas spirit, which frankly, you can experience any time of year. Um, I just think that this time of year invites us to lean into it a little bit more. And when you experience Christmas spirit, to me, it's, it's that you've tasted a little bit of abundant life. And abundant life, to be clear, is not to be mistaken for perfect life. Abundant life is that sense that whatever's going on, whatever's troubling my heart, whatever's happening out in the world that's making my head spin, things are okay. I'm grounded in love. I'm surrounded by love. There's enough hope. There's just enough to go around. We're going to make it through. So that's what I think of as abundant life. And I'm pretty sure in the stable scene in Bethlehem that there was as much fear as there was hope, much anxiety as there was joy. I mean, they didn't ask for this. They didn't see this coming. They were far from home. What was going to be next? So, so even the story that we mark this time of year has within it the full complexity of our lives, and yet it points to that abundant life. And so... I like to pull out this gospel from John in Christmas season, and you love it or you hate it, or like me, you hate it, but you've been trying to love it for like 30 years, and you're working on it. What John does that's different than the other gospels, he does, there's no like baby Jesus in the manger, no shepherds, no wise ones, no star. He kind of starts the Christmas story with the great big cosmic story, almost with the birth of the universe. And so I am convinced, the more because I, I mean, I've written papers on this one, I have wrestled this text to the ground, it still confounds me, but one thing that I'm sure it has in it is the idea that our stories, our ordinary lives, Christmas dinners, financial anxieties, you name it, are connected to the great big story of the universe. That that, he talks about how in the beginning was the word, and then later he talks about the light. Those are kind of metaphors for the Christ light. 
And so God shows up in Bethlehem. This is the first time anyone noticed that the Christ light was present, except that John tells us the Christ light was present from the beginning, that it's always been. And so if it's always been, it always is. And so really, what, when God comes in human form, it's love and light and goodness is the core of the whole world, the whole universe. And we encounter it in the grit of our lives, in, in skin and breath, as I like to say. So it's connecting a bigger story of God's love with the ordinary messiness of our lives. And so more than anything at this Christmas season, I, I like to have that reminder that the Christ presence, like we're not really just celebrating baby Jesus in the manger. We're celebrating that that light and love and goodness infuses like every cell of our bodies and every star of the galaxies. It's everywhere, always longing to be born again. And the Christmas spirit gives us that taste of it. So it's almost a season to recommit. Recommit to seeing that light and grounding ourselves in it. And so maybe like me, you sort of ground yourself in stories beyond baby Jesus this time of year. I'm not going to ask you to admit if you watch Hallmark movies. Um, yeah, I, you can't get them if you don't have cable. So if anyone knows how to like illegally get the Hallmark movies, I'm missing them this year. <laughs> or maybe, maybe it's The Grinch that you like to watch or Frosty. One of my favorites is Charlie Brown's Christmas. And um, there's this scene in it, and I wrote about this in my blog this week because I, I hadn't noticed it until someone brought it to my attention. And, I bet you wouldn't notice it either unless someone brought it to your attention. But there's this moment when Charlie Brown, you know, he's a little on the anxious side and we love him for it. But he's in this exasperated place because he's, you know, the producer of the Christmas play. And he says, what in the world? Can someone just tell me what in the world Christmas is all about? And Linus has this unusual moment of confidence. And he says, I can steps into the center stage and says, lights please. And then he tells the Christmas story by memory. And there's a moment when he says, the angel said, don't be afraid. Because as we know, that's what angels say. So he says, the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings. In just that moment, Lionel's blanket slips from his hands. Did you, Daisy, I know you're not paying attention because this is a little boring, but. Linus, in this Charlie Brown cartoon, had a blanket he carried everywhere. Do you want to hold yours up so in case people don't remember? Yeah. Linus had a blanket like that. In the moment when the angel says, don't be afraid, he drops it. And people smarter than me have said, what if? What if that was intentional? What if Schultz meant to put that there in conjunction with the moment, don't be afraid? as a reminder to us that it's our fears that keep us from basking in the presence of the Christ light. As a reminder that we too can choose to let go of the fear that grips our lives. That we too are invited again and again to let go of the false securities, to let go of the addictions, or, you know, the negative behavior, the constant critique, the self-doubt, whatever it is that keeps us from having our light shine in the world and seeing it in others. And maybe at the core of the story is that invitation, don't be afraid, you can let go. Now, here's the thing. Linus picks his blanket back up again. Like, do not, do not think that he drops the blanket once and for all and suddenly moves forward and he's got it and he's not afraid anymore. But what he does later on when he's got his blanket is they're decorating Charlie's tree. You remember Charlie Brown's Christmas tree? Kind of, kind of sparse. <laughs> they decorate it at the end and it turns into a glorious tree and Linus takes his blanket and wraps it around the bottom like a, a tree skirt. So he takes, he takes those 
fears and he puts them to use and, and he engages them and says, I have something creative to offer when I just loosen my grip on the fear a little bit. So Christmas is a hard Sunday, a hard day of the year to preach on because it is such an amazing, happy, joy-filled story. And yet the world out there is filled with the hopes and the fears of all the years. We've got the brink of climate crisis that we're on. We've got people in the land where Jesus was born facing atrocities that just aren't even imaginable to us every day. And maybe you're facing this Christmas with some grief in your heart. I mean, all of that global stuff. And then there's what is it that you're facing? So if anything, the, the invitation to abundant life cannot be silence the hard stuff. Instead, it's got to be tap into the light. Trust that this light that birthed a universe is as present in the stars in the sky as it is in the cells in your body. To trust that the Christ child wasn't just born once in Bethlehem, but was born with the birthing of the cosmos, the birth of every child. And in every single moment when we show up and choose to ground ourselves in holy love, knowing that there's stuff that scares us, there's stuff that threatens to knock us down, but that love and that light is enough to connect us and ground us to turn towards a hopeful future. So what memory or promise will take root in your heart this season knowing that the hopes and the fears of all the years are still going to be present, what will it be that makes you trust maybe just a little bit more that even our warm memories serve us best if we loosen our grip on them enough so that we can show up to this moment fully present? Christ is born. Christ is born. The light is present in you. Thanks be to God. Amen. invite us into into a time of prayer and acknowledging that that this is a full time of year for us that there might be a lot of prayers in your heart and I urge you to take a position that works for you maybe your eyes closed is the best thing to quiet your mind or maybe it's the light shining through the stained glass windows or one of these candles hope or peace or joy or love that you need to focus on so just whatever you need, trust that the Spirit is here as we pray. Let's, let's pray together. God of light, eternal word, 
We offer prayers of gratitude, of thanksgiving, of lavish love. We are so grateful for the moms who make us lunches, for the friends who know when we need a call or a text, for the children in our lives who show us not just what it is to be innocent, but what it is to be resilient to the elders who guide us, who remind us that we belong. We offer prayers this day for, for all those we know who are walking through grief, who are lonely. Pray for ourselves in our own moments when we lose faith in the goodness of one another and the goodness of our God. We pray for those for whom this Christmas will be cold and hungry. And we pray for our own sense of helplessness. Guide us. Call us. Enable us, O oh God, to create communities and places of love and life where there's room for all. And in this hurting world, we hold prayers and space for the places and the atrocities we'll never see, but we know are happening. Oh God, in gratitude that the Christ child is born, that your light does not let us go, that your call to be your people is persistent. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, in the name of that one from Galilee who taught us to pray in silence and to pray with words and to pray in song, but to pray often. And so we share as we're able in his words together. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those to trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever amen a special reminder to please join us this night at seven o'clock for our candlelight service and and before that to come down for coffee and conversation i think there might even be hot chocolate today um so join us even if you're just here for the first time Oh, coffee, tea, and cider. Okay, well, I didn't promise hot chocolate, but I might be able to find you some. Um, and we're going to sing. It's a, oh, yeah. Okay, so another favorite Christmas carol. Um, sing it like you mean it. Sing it like no one's listening. Let's celebrate the birth of Christ. <laughs>
Christmas Eve, may you let your light shine. And as we go, a blessing, deep, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the bright stars to you, deep peace of the crisp snow to you, deep peace of the silent nights to you, and deep peace of the Christ child to each and every one of you and those you love. Merry Christmas. Amen.